spoke of the excesses of Wall Street and now to discuss two more of America's favorite pastimes, obesity and racism. And I'm joined by my panel of all white male non-experts. <laughs> a writer comedian, perhaps best known for his portrayal of TV's Frank on Mystery Science Theater 3000, the lovely and talented Frank Conniff, comedian author of Get Rich Cheating and the co-producer of TheFinalEdition.com, the great Jeff Chrysler, and a political comedian you can see regularly here in New York City through August 30th at the Laughing Liberally Lab at Jimmy's number 43 in New York City, Mr. Scott Blakeman, also familiar to viewers of FoxNews.com. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, obesity isn't just a major public health problem. According to the American Medical Association, it is now officially a disease. Uh, the Influential Physicians Group voted to classify obesity as a disease at its annual meeting, opening the door for improved treatments and insurance coverage for the estimated 36% of Americans who are obese. This will potentially open access to a wide range of treatments for health conditions like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease, as well as lap band surgeries. That's my introduction. Um, <laughs> now, so here's the question. Uh, I'm sure we're already going to hear opponents of this classification say, oh, so now I want to eat Twinkies and I have a crutch. I'm, uh, I have a disease now. And that perhaps this classification runs the risk of encouraging reliance on big pharma and lap band surgeries and liposuction over diet and exercise. Jeff, is this a concern? Well, I mean, you got your chocolate covered diet pills. Right, so you, <laughs> you can get fat mm -hmm. and get treated. I, I don't think it's a big concern. I think it actually, if it forces people to get on board with taking care of themselves, so be it. If it's sort of the kick in the giant size butt to get them moving, great. I mean, right now, uh, obesity is obviously sort of an epidemic. If not, disease maybe is not a strong enough word. I don't know if you've seen people in places, <coughs> places that look like a different species. Yes. And it's not Heart disease me. and diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. The cost of obesity to us is $535 billion a right. year. So is there a hope that this classification may begin to bring that cost down? Absolutely. We have to take it seriously because too often uh, obesity, oh, it's a joke, it's funny. And it's not, no one mm. is saying just because you'll be able to have drugs and, and lap surgery covered, that means, oh, do whatever you want. You know, the, the thing is you have to do some, it's, it, this is, it's a life or death situation, whatever people can do, because the, the money will be spent eventually anyway. If you don't do anything to prevent obesity or deal with it you, later on online, emergency room and, and all other kinds of things. No, people, you know, lung cancer is a disease and it, people contribute to it by smoking, but we don't quarrel with calling that a disease. So I think we should call obesity a disease. Right, and if someone sure. like juggles chainsaws, you don't complain when they amputate themselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, unless you're at a show. Well, right. you, know. Well, you know, depression is considered a disease, and I, I right. think that and this has been coming for a long time. Frank? Oh, I, was, I was just about to say that I think it's been helpful that things like depression and alcoholism are looked at as diseases and treated as such, and I think that that's helped the people who have suffered from these things and, and who hopefully who suffer from obesity We'll, we'll look at it as an illness that needs to be treated and then may hopefully follow the process that they need to follow instead of just feeling like they're all on their own and it's right. all up to willpower. Exactly. Right. exactly. I mean, we do have the tools, whether or not people rely on them as crutches, mm -hmm. they are there to help and it is a burden mm -hmm. that we all yeah, really carry. Yeah, my tools are called <coughs> uh, uh, forks and knives and spoons. Mm, exactly. <laughs> Get smaller they, I call those your enablers, <laughs> yes. Well, does, is there a danger this will open up the floodgates to a bunch of other uh, ailments now being considered diseases like male pattern baldness or I am a, I am a, a buck tooth sufferer? But aren't we already there? I mean, yeah. aren't we already getting people, you get medical coverage for vitamins? Viagra, you well, got restless legs. But I would separate the two. I mean, uh, insurance does cover. Uh, I don't. I, baldness, I think that may not be covered. But I think Viagra, look, you know, letting people have sex into their 90s is something we should strive for. I would so, actually agree with that. Yes, <laughs> no, really. So I think that, and I think, you know, I'm sure on Fox they'll be railing. Oh, well, you know. The point is, it's a serious matter, and not just obesity, but anorexia, bulimia. Too many often people go, hey, what's the problem? Just eat. I mean, there's a lot of ignorance on this subject. Right. The more we can make it serious and say, no, this is life or death. It's a disease. Let's treat it as such. I think we should it's do like it. He said there's two sides of the disease. There's people who eat too much, and then there's people who don't eat, you know, mm -hmm. and, and suffer that way, too. Well, of course. Well, speaking of ignorance and obesity, uh, <laughs> let's talk about <clears throat> Paula Deen. Um, let's talk about someone who can speak directly to obesity, diabetes, and apparently racism, because celebrity chef Paula Deen is being sued by a former employee for <coughs> discrimination and has reportedly admitted to repeatedly using the N-word, telling racial jokes, and wanting African-American waiters to play the role of happy slaves at a wedding party she was putting together. Oh, that's bad now? Uh, this all stemmed from a May 17th videotaped deposition that Paula Dean gave, most likely to her grand wizard. So let's start off with, uh, with the wedding. Look, when, you, when you're having a Gone with the Wind themed event, uh, do you, Frank, do you have to cast happy slaves? I, I don't know. I think a Gone with the Wind themed event for it to be uh, 
um, appropriate to Gone with the Wind, it would have to be overlong and overrated. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. No, well, I would say, you know, uh, look, I don't know what's in Paula Dean's heart. I mean, judging by what she cooks, I can pretty good idea what's <laughs> in her bloodstream. Uh, uh, yeah, you but, know what's uh, in her arteries. Yeah, but I would have to say, though, and this is nothing with Paula Dean in general. Look, I, even if all or some of this is true, it's reprehensible, it's offensive. But I would like to say that I'm not in favor of trial by Twitter in this country. And the fact is, and I would correct you just a little bit, the, the lawsuit go, is, was filed over a year ago in Savannah. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, her brother's name is Bubba. So <laughs> let's, let's, we toast Southern stereotypes. And he has Uncle Bubba's seafood shack. And he's being accused of racial discrimination, se sexual discrimination. And she apparently was uh, on the premises and, and has been said to have been part of it. Right. Now, there's all this. Uh, my point, though, is that the original story came from the National Enquirer, which That's can be correct. Very true. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a video, supposedly, but we the don't know. Yes. And I watched some, read some coverage online to the Daily mm -hmm. News citing something which was based on radar, which was based on the. So I think that let's just take a breath for change. And even though I'm glad, I'm glad we're bringing this up because I think it is a problem when somebody is demonized. And look. She but makes unhealthy that. food. If she said these things, it, it's horrible. Yes, but we know she's we bigoted get, towards look, arteries. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. she may be in a, to others, but I think we should get, let's take a breath and see uh, what the real facts are. What is has, I was just going to say she has uh, possibly type 2 diabetes and type 1 racism. Yeah. I also don't think, look, the, the audience on Twitter is not her demographic. I mean, people talk, is this going to hurt her brand? Right. Well, she's not like. Her audience isn't Michael Bloomberg and the editors mm. at the root. Well, no, like, but respectfully, her audience is people who enjoy Southern food, and that's a lot of African right. Americans. Well, that mm. it, it will hurt her, obviously, with that demographic. But In, indeed, I, I, I think. It, the thing that amazes me most about Paula Dean, and this brings the point, is I think she's a perfect avatar for our time. Because America needs to have some important conversations, but instead of having those conversations, we call each other names and eat our feelings. And that essentially mm -hmm. is what she represents. And then afterwards, we take some drugs in order to take care of our arteries. That's stupid, Jeff. I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> you are, you are <laughs> a jerk. <laughs> well, my feelings when I eat them are always deep fried. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, I'll, I'll, I want to give you the last word. Will it hurt her or help her? I, I, you know, I don't think it, as Jeff said too, I don't think that the people who eat terribly unhealthy food are that concerned. And also, <laughs> I, I really don't think that, uh, look, she's not, if she's treating her employees badly and using racial discrimination, then that's something I think people should keep in mind. And we'll just see how it plays out. But I, I, I think we shouldn't demonize before we know all the facts. Indeed, I think the same thing. I want to thank Scott Blakeman, Jeff Chrysler, and Frank Conniff. And don't go away. We'll be back with some very healthy remarks about sick leave. Rick Scott and Alec, you don't want to miss it.